All right, guys, so I'm going to take out Mace today. Uh, yesterday I was um, feeding him through the fence, and I really liked our session. He had a few blow ups, um, but his eyes were really different, and he stayed in that mindset um, for a lot shorter periods of time. Again, I want to reiterate. Mace is certainly not the worst dog we've ever had here, and he's definitely not the most dangerous dog we've ever trained, but if you know anything about Dutchies and Malleys and the working dogs, they can really be very dangerous in very specific contexts, right? So even if a dog isn't like the worst dog you've ever seen or the hardest or the strongest or the craziest, doesn't mean that dog still can't really mess you up. Now, um, somebody said something interesting, like I posted just a little snippet of me and uh, Mace and, and I was just working him around the fence. Like, Don't be a pussy, he's kennel aggressive and go in there and pull him out. And it's like, yeah, I know he's kennel aggressive. Do you think that's a healthy behavior? I've had some pretty nasty dogs in my time and I've trained with some pretty nasty dogs. When they were dangerous, they would show those behaviors in the kennel. When they were in a good state of mind and really ready to cooperate and work with you, they wouldn't show you those, they might show somebody else that behavior, but they wouldn't show you the prospective handler that behavior, right? And my goal isn't to be a cowboy and you know get bit and be the tough guy and whatever else, I leave that to other people. My goal is to actually take this dog and mold him into something functional that I can hand off to somebody else that they can use him in a productive way, right? So a lot of people allow a lot of conflict. I'm the big strong guy and fuck it, nail me and it's all good and whatever, man, I'm tough, I don't care. I do care. Because especially for dogs like Dachis and Malawas, once they do it once, it's in their repertoire. Now, I don't know. Maybe he's chewed up a handler in the past and I wasn't told about it. I wouldn't be shocked, okay? But as far as I know, he has not. So the last thing I want to do is give him that experience where, you know, he bites me and he gets away with that. Because then that's always going to be a possibility down the road. And it makes the dog that much more dangerous to work with. So I don't care if the dog is the baddest dog in the world or whatever else. I'm always cautious. I've been to the hospital. I've seen my insides. I'm not interested in doing that again. Now, will it, may it happen? Of course it could happen, right? It could happen today when I go and pull them out. Um, but you play it cautious and you work to increase the dog's sense of cooperation and, and that him and you are a team and we're not in conflict. Now, at some point we are gonna be in conflict over some things, but by then I'm gonna have a, a relationship with him, hopefully, that allows us to go through that without anybody getting hurt. So that's the thing, like I've taken a lot of really nasty dogs and turned them into something useful and functional, right? That's one of, uh, I'd like to say that that's one of my talents, okay? And I've helped a lot of people with those types of dogs where they would go somewhere else and they'd say, yeah man, you just gotta be tough and take the bites and bro, that dog bites you, you're going to the hospital, right? That's not the way it is. Like I, I don't think good training involves getting bitten. Now it could happen, but I don't think generally that that's something you should accept or something you should seek because that, in my opinion, creates a, a really bad history that the dog can always fall back on. And, and dogs are very pattern-based. So in specific contexts, they might be completely safe, and in others, they're, they're not. So I'm sorry, for a dog to show me aggression, if I'm feeding him and then I hold the food back through the fence, that's telling you, hey, I'm not feeling 100% good about you. I'm not feeling safe about you. And it, listen, I've had the dog now a week, he's in the kennel, and already his behavior's so much better. Right? Just through the fence. There's so much less conflict. Now there's still conflict. He's still definitely not what I would say safe, safe. But now I feel comfortable enough that I'm gonna take him out and see how she goes, okay? So it's all about kind of establishing that foundation and taking your time. There's no rush. I'm not going in there to show him who's boss, right? I wanna make him into something useful and functional. So let's go get him. So I can see there when I went to get him out, he had a nice energy. 
right? Like the eyes were soft. He wasn't giving me the, the stink eye, right? And he's been doing that the last couple days. So now I know, you know, probably I can get him out. Now, putting him back in might be different because he really wants to come out, obviously. So putting him back in, I'll have to kind of be a little bit more careful. Now I'm gonna feed him from my hand for the first time and we'll see how it goes after he goes to the bathroom here. Good boy, no jumping. So even the jumping, you know, you can misconstrue and say, oh, it's friendly, but that can change really quickly where they jump on you a few times and then they get a little mace. Zip, zip, jump. Up, 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 jump. Good boy. And not too much in the beginning. You just have a nice time. Gets around a little bit. Now I've already made a mistake of let my slip lead get low on his neck. <laughs> and um, when your slip lead gets low on the neck, then you don't have leverage on the dog. So if he decides that he's not so happy with me, um, I don't have as nearly as much leverage to be able to kind of get him off of me if he decides to attach himself to me in some capacity. So that was a big mistake, which I will not make again. But hey, these things happen. Mace. Chip. Super. Good boy. Zip. Chip. God damn, you take that food a little hard, my friend. <laughs> it's a good thing he's missing uh, those teeth between the canines. Those are the ones that always nip your fingers. Mace. Up. 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 Chip. So we're having a nice time. That's good. Now I'm going to put him back. We'll end on a good note here. I got other things to do. I got to have breakfast. So. So it went really well uh, just at the end so again you have to recognize dangers before they occur so he came in and he decided that for whatever reason somebody here was gonna do my work with him okay and he got excited and he got amped up arousal always increases danger okay I don't know the dog maybe he's a redirector remember what I said about contexts some dogs are very context specific about when they become a little bit dangerous there's food on the ground maybe that that makes him dangerous there's the possibility of bite work. Maybe that makes him dangerous. He sees a ball. Maybe that makes him dangerous, right? There's so many different things that can trigger a dog to offer nasty behaviors, right? And again, you don't know the history of the dog 100%. I went to Holland, I bought this dog, you know, having known him for about five minutes, okay? So if he's like any of the other Dutchies I know, there are certain triggers that increase the likelihood that he can be aggressive. So I have to be cognizant of that. So I came in here, he went into a high state of arousal. I have no ability to control the dog because my slip leads down at the base of his neck. Okay, I'm trying to get a cash pull on the dog. And I don't know, maybe he's in that state of mind. He turns around, he sees me, he's just gonna smoke me. Because again, we don't really have a relationship yet. So it's one of those things where 
you can, people will say I'm being hyper cautious. I'm being hyper cautious because I've seen it go wrong a few too many times. And like I said, I'm not interested in having that happen to me or having that happen to him because both of those things will decrease the possibility that we can be effective together. I don't want him to ever bite me, ideally, okay? And I certainly don't want him to bite me in a situation where he can get away with it, right? And because it's just gonna set a really bad precedent. So doing things properly, taking your time, you know, having good little sessions like that, that's the building blocks of success with a dog like Mace.